Namaste, welcome back to part two of the Law of Attraction video series. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what is time, uh, what is our experience of time, and how does that relate us to the Law of Attraction. And at the beginning of this video, I'm gonna talk uh, a bit about quantum mechanics uh, to sort of help us lay the framework for what we need to understand later. And so if it gets a little bit conceptual, uh, I apologize. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to keep it very simple and uh, just try to hang with me if you can because we're gonna get some really remarkable insights on the law of attraction near the end of the video. So this is sort of my own personal theory of how time works according to what we know of quantum mechanics thus far. Uh, I'm not a theoretical physicist, so this is just my personal interpretation on the literature, but uh, it's something that I'm very interested in and study and read about and listen to talks about quite a bit. So I feel like it's a pretty um, honest representation of the models we have. So with that being said, we begin with the idea that consciousness exists outside of space and time. So consciousness has no beginning or end. It was never born and it will not die uh, because space and time are appearances inside of consciousness, okay? So with that understanding, we look at the quantum physics model, uh, which is something called a double, the double slit experiment. And uh, most of you are probably pretty familiar with this experiment. And this model show, or this experiment rather, sh showed us that when physicists shoot a, a particle through a slit, and if they are observing it, it will always hit the wall at one particular location. And this happens every single time that they observe the particle. However, when they are not observing it, or when nothing is observing it, the particle shows itself to be what it truly is, which is actually just a wave or a field of possibility or probability. And this is all based on statistics, which is why it looks like a wave. So it's most likely that the top point of the crest of the wave will hit the wall first, and then as we fan out, it's less and less likely the wave will hit the wall at this far end or that far end, but it is still in the potential field of possibilities to happen. So they're showing us that all locations, possibilities of the electron or photon exist simultaneously, sort of outside of time, I guess. But when we witness it or observe it through our human brains, we're only able to see one appearance in a specific space-time location at a time. Not sure why that is, that's just the way that it is. So this is called wave-particle duality, which means that wave exi uh, particles exist in two forms simultaneously, as particles and as waves, or sort of a cloud, right? And these waves, or what they call them is actually fields, are, according to theoretical physicists, are fluid-like substances that expand across the entire universe for infinity, okay? And in the latest models of physics, they've actually done away with particles altogether. They said, matter is not made, nature is not made out of particles. Nature is only made out of these fluid-like substances they call fields, which stretch through infinity. And these fields or waves um, ripple in unique ways to create the appearance of one particle at the crest of the wave, which is all that we see with our eyes. But all there actually is is this kind of just interconnected field that stretches for infinity. So the electron fields, for example, going through my body right now that are rippling in such a way to give you the appearance of me standing here with this body in this location are the same exact fields that are stretching through your body and creating your appearance and everything else you can see. So we are quite literally made of the same stuff. Everything is connected. Everything is one field of harmony, of connection. And this is... Um, pretty accurate according to spirituality, right? In spirituality, we say we are all waves in the ocean of God. We are all waves in the infinite being of God. And this is ironically the exact same um, model that theoretical physicists use, or uh, analogy rather, to explain wave-particle duality. They say it is like the waves of an ocean. All the waves appear to be an individuated unit, but they are all part of the same ocean. So, so far we're pretty much on the exact same page from what we know of science. Now, there was a physicist named Max Planck, who's probably one of the or the most famous quantum physicists, who came up with um, the smallest individual unit of time that we can slice time into, 
to measure. And this term is called a jiffy. You've probably heard people say, I'll see you in a jiffy. That's a term from quantum physics. And a jiffy is the amount of time that it takes light or a photon to travel one Fermi. And a Fermi is just an unimaginably small unit of distance, the smallest unit of distance they can measure. So that jiffy takes 33.3564 picoseconds to travel the distance. There are one trillion picoseconds in a second. Okay, so when we do the math, if we say that every single jiffy is a different frame on the movie strip of your life, is a different configuration of energy that consciousness puts together in an order, a sequential order, to give you the illusion that you're experiencing this life right now. But really, all possible realities, configurations of energy, are existing simultaneously in the field, right? So if we look at a jiffy as a frame, we can do the math and say that, and know that there are 333,564 jiffies per second, or frames per second, if we're using the movie strip analogy. So when we go to the movies, we watch what is actually a sequence of pictures in order, right? And it's happening so fast, there's so many thousands of frames per second that it gives our mind the illusion that we're watching a motion picture. So if I move my pen from here to here, first you see it here, and then you see it there. So it gives your mind the illusion that this happened and then this happened. But in actuality, all the frames exist at the same time. All possible realities are happening at the same time. But motion gives rise to the sense of time. So moving through space gives rise to the sense of time, which is what Albert Einstein said in his theory of relativity, that time and space are actually one and the same thing called space-time, right? It's the same exact phenomenon. So you watch a movie and you get so engrossed in the movie, if it really grips you that when the credits roll and the lights come on, you sort of forget who you are for a minute. It takes you three to five seconds to kind of piece your life back together. You know, who am I, where am I, where was I before this, where am I going after this? Um, because you got so lost that you kind of sort of forgot who you are for a minute. And that is a perfect example of what consciousness is doing through your life right now, or I should say what you are doing uh, through this individuated experience. You are getting lost in this, this movie because you can only really watch a movie the first time, right? Once you've already seen the movie and you know everything that's going to happen, you can't ever watch it the same way again. And so consciousness is watching every infinite possible reality ex that could exist simultaneously. And that's what you are, a wave of that ocean. So in the movie film strip analogy, we, we can understand that these pictures on the film strip are not connected. We can slice them apart. We can take this one to Mars. We can keep this one on Earth. And the two pictures are planets apart, right? They're not structurally related at all. They've just been put in an order that when you watch them fast enough or look at them fast enough, gives the sense that something is really firmly happening. But if we were to, if you watch movies where people travel through time, they always go the speed of light and everything is paused around them. Everyone is frozen in time because they're watching one frame on the configuration of energy in all the possible realities of consciousness. And this is what Albert Einstein realized when he came up with the theory of relativity. He was sitting on a train and watching a clock tower in the distance as he traveled away from it. And he thought to himself, what would happen if I was going the speed of light and looking at that clock? And he realized that, of course, the clock would appear to be standing still because the frame, the jiffy that's traveling the speed of light, is going the same speed he is going. So he's sort of stuck viewing one frame now. Right? And the more you slow down, the faster time appears to go, which is why when they put astronauts in the space station and they circle the Earth, they're going, you know, I don't know how many miles an hour, like 40 or 50,000. So when they come back to Earth, they've actually lost a few seconds, or I think even maybe minutes, off of their lifetime. Or I think the opposite is true, actually. They've, the, everyone else has aged faster than they have. So with this analogy of the movie strip, we can sort of compare it to a phenomenon that happens with uh, people who experiment with psychedelics. 
People who do psychedelics report a very common um, phenomenon called trails, trailing. They say if you move your hand like this, you'll see a, a bunch of pictures of a hand, right? Not a blur or a, a stream, but actually individual pictures. If you watch a bird fly over the sky, you will actually see five separate birds, individual pictures of a bird, which is a pretty remarkable thing to experience. You are seeing where the bird is and where it was and everything in between at the same time. And the reason for this in my experience, in my opinion, is that um, psychedelics are very close to being legalized for psych use in psychotherapy, probably within the next year or so. And that's because psychedelics have a, have a power to sort of silence or mute the part of our brains that control our ego. The part of our mind that slices up reality into labels and definitions and tries to put a name on everything, tries to make borders between things and understand reality in a conceptual way. But the truth is that reality cannot be understood conceptually because reality is all connected. It's one field of harmony that there is no real border or boundary to, right? And so when that part of your mind is silenced, therapists, for example, can go deeper into people's subconscious mind and help them understand their depression, their PTSD, their anxiety in a much more experiential way now that the narrating part of their brain has been removed. And so people who take these uh, drugs in psychotherapy use report that they feel this very strong sense of everything is connected, everything is one energy expressing itself. And so we should all love each other. We should be kind to one another. We should work together. Um, and this makes a lot of sense according to quantum physics, right? We know that they're actually seeing reality more how it actually is. Everything is connected. There aren't any actual borders or boundaries between anything. And when you're seeing a bird fly by and, and you see five pictures of the bird, you're seeing four or five of the possible places it could appear in time and space at the same time because you're dividing, def defining and labeling part of your brain isn't working at all anymore. So now you're starting to see reality more as it really is versus how you normally see it through the filter of the ego. And so with the model of quantum physics, we can use this to understand how your life works in your experience of time. We can look at this waveform as your life. This is your entire lifetime, right? And you start at this point. This is your birth right here, okay? And a lot of uh, law of attraction teachings will say things like, everything is possible, you can manifest anything you want. And I like the positivity and the enthusiasm and trying to get people to really have a belief in this idea, but uh, that's not ultimately the truth because you were born with these set of parents, with these genetics, in this space-time location. That is where you came into this reality, and that is your individual experience that you cannot change, right? You are stuck with that. This is where you've incarnated into. But as time goes by, the field of possibility expands rapidly, right? Every nanosecond is another choice you can be making. You could go to the left, you could go to the right, and every time you make a decision, it travels you in a different direction in this probability field of your life. So one thing that's very important to understand is that the cosmic mind is always communicating to you through your feelings, okay? And a lot of spiritual circles will call this your higher self, and um, while that's not absolutely true, there isn't another self, there's just you. Um, I like the expression because at least it still implies yourself at a higher level. So we can use that term loosely. Your higher self is always communicating to you through feelings, right? Through things that resonate. So we can divide this arbitrarily for the sake of the example in half and say that this side of the wave are paths of resonance, right? Things that resonate with you. And the bottom side would be paths of non-resonance things that don't make you feel good, things that you don't want to experience, okay? So let's say that I'm right here in my timeline. I'm 29 years old, uh, I'm a spiritual teacher, and this is the reality I've manifested for myself. Well, I could have been a drug addict, right? I could be strung out on drugs right now. If I'd followed that probability timeline, 
but I didn't because that's not something I wanted to experience. So it's not possible for me, no matter how much I want to manifest it, to be a drug addict at this second. I can't develop an addiction to a drug right now because I didn't follow that timeline. But I could, however, manifest that reality in two months time if I try to quickly travel down the probability field from the path of resonance into paths of non-resonance. So for example, I could start thinking about drugs, right? I, I wanna go out and buy a bunch of blow and meth and heroin tonight, right? Let's say, and I go out and buy it. I start taking it every single day. I skip work. I just take copious amounts of this stuff until I develop a, an addiction and I'm two months later, I'm out on the streets, strung out on, on meth and heroin with a needle in my arm talking to myself, right? Now my parents have to stage an intervention and get me into a clinic. So I could, I could manifest that reality if it resonated with me, but it doesn't resonate with me, so it's not a, a path I choose to follow. So when you understand that, your higher self is communicating to you through your feelings, you understand that if it resonates, follow it. If it doesn't resonate with you, don't follow it. It's really that simple. Your only job is to mind your feelings. And this is because consciousness exists outside of time and space, right? It is infinite intelligence. And so you have to look at it as sort of this entity who knows everything that could possibly happen from every decision you make. It knows the outcome of every decision you could make. And it's communicating to you in every circumstance, yes or no, right? If you feel in your gut, your gut instinct, not to do something, not to go with someone, not to whatever, um, you should always, always follow that. Turn your mind off, throw away the key. Your mind only gets in the way. Because we all know that our gut instinct, our gut feelings are always right. They're never wrong. But we make wrong decisions anyways because our mind gets in, in the way and, and trespasses on territory it doesn't have the right to be in. Your mind can't predict the future. Your mind doesn't know what's going to happen. So when you start doubting yourself, oh man, do I really think this person's untrustworthy? I mean, come on, he's got a lot of money. He could invest in my business. I should probably trust him then. I could take advantage of this opportunity. And then all of a sudden, you take a bunch of money from a guy who scams you and takes your business from you, right? So if it feels good, if it feels like it makes you more expansive and alive and joyful and happy, and it's something that resonates with you, that's consciousness telling you, your higher self telling you, go this way. This is the path of resonance. This will take you where you want to go. This will give you a, an experience that you want to have. And when you get an, a feeling, for example, of uh, going down, you're walking down a street and you turn and see a dark alleyway, just the most obvious example, you see a bunch of shady looking guys staring off at you in the distance and your higher self communicates immediately to you with a feeling. You get a gut feeling. Don't go down that road. Don't go down that alley. Those guys don't look trustworthy. They might have something bad in mind for you. You should turn around right now and walk the other way as fast as you can. Okay, all of that data was downloaded and communicated instantaneously, timelessly, right? Without the need for thoughts. You didn't think any of it through. You just turn around and go, okay? And it's always doing this. It does it more subtly sometimes. It does it very viscerally other times. But you have to get good at being in touch with what you're feeling. What, what vibrational energy are you picking up? Because it's always the right read. The next part is that you should never allow your circumstances to dictate what you feel about your life, okay? This is the order that manifestation happens in. First, you have to become interested in something, something that sparks your attention. If you're interested in it, you become focused on it. You start to desire it. That focus and desire eventually develops feelings, right? This is something I love doing. I enjoy doing this. I am passionate about it. It makes me feel ecstatic. Those feelings eventually will shift your circumstances. If you stay in that vibrational state, your circumstances will start to line up with the reality you're experiencing already inside of you. And then that becomes your reality, right? This is the order it must happen in. So if you go in reverse order, you're setting yourself up for huge failure. If you allow your life circumstances, some negative comment or whatever, to affect the way you feel, if you take that negative comment, for example, and you accept it in your being, and you feel doubt about yourself, you feel bad about yourself, 
Well, now your circumstances have told you what to feel. And now your feelings are creating a new desire and a new focus, which is, I'm not good enough. I don't think I can do this or whatever it is. And those focuses and desires are causing you to be interested in something you're not actually interested in. You don't actually want to doubt yourself. You don't actually want to believe you're not worthy, worthy or good enough. But you went in the wrong order. So if you've taken your feelings from your circumstances, I'm telling you now, never, ever, ever do that ever again. Do not allow what happens to you to dictate how you feel about your life. And a good uh, spiritual practice for you is to live from the state of, I call it, nothing happens. And this is a famous, also a famous spiritual book written by uh, an Indian sage named Papaji who talked about this idea where you, know, you might be walking down the street and this lady is walking her stroller, this person's running a red light, that person's backing their car out, this person's filling up his gas tank, and you're just walking, you're not interested in any of it. So you really don't even notice it. You might see them and it's just out of your mind right away. So if you're not interested in it, if you assign it no significance, to you, even though something is happening around you, it's as if nothing ever happened, right? If you're not interested in it, it doesn't register in your consciousness. So the key to this is to live your entire life this way. Get good at keeping your energy to yourself. Do not go giving significance and importance away to every little thing you see happening, even if it's a very negative thing. Give it absolutely no attention or significance. Do what needs to be done in your life. You know, you get a bill in the mail. Oh no, how am I gonna now afford to fund my business or whatever? Don't even think that. If the thought appears, wipe it away and just pay the bill and do what you need to keep doing and keep moving, keep vibrating at the state you're already on. Because if you don't, you're gonna be always ping-ponging up and down on this uh, probability field and not actually going anywhere you wanna go. Every time somebody doubts you or every time a circumstance arises that makes you doubt yourself, if you believe it and you assign it importance, you're gonna travel this way, right? And so you're actually just ping-ponging around between other people's uh, timelines that they're living in. Other people are, are coming in your time wave and affecting you because you're allowing them to. But if you don't allow something to affect you, then it won't. If you assign it no significance, it doesn't have the ability to touch you. So you realize that you have all the power. The power exists right inside of here. And imagine just how powerful you would be if you only gave your energy, if you only gave your significance, interest, desire, attention to the things that do resonate. You're trying to get a promotion at work and your boss says, hey Steve, great job on that presentation, man. I just wanna let you know you're doing an excellent job. Keep up the good work, I'm really liking it. Well then now that's a circumstance that does resonate with you. It makes you feel good. And so you assign your significance to that. You give your attention to that. Wow, my boss is noticing my hard work. It's starting to happen. I'm shifting my reality. I'm feeling more uh, confident. And your vibration continues to increase as you travel up the field. So you're going to manifest your desired reality that much quicker if you can only give your energy to the things that resonate with you. So if you wanna be an entrepreneur, for example, and you have a bunch of buddies who are addicted to video games and they keep inviting you over all the time and you go over and you play with them one night, you have a fun time and you really know you wanted to be at home working on your business but you wanted to hang out with your, your buddies and then, hey man, we're having another game night on Saturday and you go to that game night and you're starting to get addicted to these video games and you're wasting all this time not working on your business inside of you, you know it's wrong. You know it's not what resonates with you. What you really want is to be an entrepreneur and start your own business. But you've gotten interested in someone else's path of resonance. And so you're not following your own desires anymore. So don't allow that to happen. Don't allow anybody else to influence um, what you're interested in. Don't allow anyone else's circumstances to dictate yours. Keep moving up the field of resonance. And if you live your life in the place that nothing ever happens to me. I'm just in this field of possibility. I exist in this field of potential and I can have whatever frame I want. Then that will be what your experience is. Because with this movie strip analogy, you have to understand that you are selecting every single frame that appears on the movie strip, all 333,000 plus of them. But you're not doing it with your conscious mind because your conscious mind is far too slow, right? to keep up with that, it's far too limited. But you are selecting them with your vibrational state, with your interest, with your passions. Whatever you're giving interest to is what your frequency level is at and consciousness, or you, your higher self, 
is using that as a cue to know which frame of possible configurations of energy that all exist simultaneously, are all available to you. It's using that as a cue to know which one slides next in the frame of your movie. So you are manifesting your reality, whether you know it or not. And it's happening based on what you're interested in, what you're giving value to. So if you get nothing else out of this video, I want you to understand that. You must keep your focus on the thing you want to desire and see it, feel it, become it, embody it. Imagine what it would be like, what it would feel like to already have it. Because there is a reality where you do have it. So just simply align yourself with that one which exists already and resonate with that one and your circumstances will begin to change around you. It's, uh, the analogy I like to use for this is the idea of somebody playing a grand piano upon a stage in a big auditorium. You're playing a song in the key of C and all of a sudden you think of a song in B flat that you want to play, right? But you're playing in C and the frequencies are resonating in the auditorium. So what do you have to do? Well, you have to just start playing in the key of B. Your circumstances are still in the key of C. Reality is shaped in the key of C because that's what you were playing before. <coughs> but if you just keep playing in B flat, even though the echoes will come back for a while, don't let the echo of the key of C make you go back to the key of C again. Oh, I, I'm hearing, oh, it sounds terrible. Keep playing in B flat and ignoring what you're hearing. Don't give any significance to it. And when the music becomes only B flat, when these frequencies die down and diminish, all of a sudden you've shifted into a parallel reality where you're now playing in the key of B flat in a different song. That is exactly how the law of attraction works. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. And uh, in our next video, we're gonna be talking about actual methods and techniques that you can use to start manifesting your desired reality right now in this moment. So thank you guys very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.